Today, everything we worked towards the last couple of weeks needs to be shown on that field today. We will not get embarrassed again. The shit that happened before, get it out your mind. Mentally prepare yourself to go out there. We're going out there, we're gonna fuck shit up. We're gonna redeem ourselves. They think right now, they're gonna get some revenge on their home field. The shit's not happening today. Not today, not ever. Today, we're going out there, we're fucking shit up. We're redeeming, redeeming ourselves. We're showing everyone what we're about. We're showing our fans why they should come and see us still. Ladies, let's fucking go. Fucking what we got to do, ladies? It's a redemption tour. Right fucking now, we show the crowd why the fuck they need to be here every fucking week because of this shit right here. We went to we, Atlanta came to us, we build off of Atlanta. People are down, people are hurt, we need other people to step the fuck up. Y'all make a name for yourself right now? Yeah. That's what it is. It's nothing else. We know we have the tools. We already know what we're supposed to do. It's there. Redemption it time. So Let's redemption go. Fucking Let's go. Time. On three. Ready? One, two, three. Rebel Redemption! The winner stays in the hunt in the Eastern Conference. The loser, an early exit. Next. I just want to be given the chance. You were the pioneers that built women's football. The opportunity to succeed. Or even to fail. You are the league of their own. Figure out what the f*** you need to do mentally to be able to sacrifice everything for the girl next to you. You better knock the shit out of her. Put the hurt on them first. Keep them on the ground. Stick your foot on their throat. Along the Monongahela River, it is LFL football in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Welcome inside the booth of LFL Football Night. As always, Mitch Mortaza alongside Bobby Huco. And we are here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Bobby, the last time we were here was a little colder. 25 degrees, gusting winds, near frigid temperatures. A little different at kickoff. We're expecting about 75 degrees in sunshine. A little nicer, a little toastier here in the booth. And Omaha versus Pittsburgh, a great Eastern Conference matchup. But you got to figure these two teams are really at the crossroads of their 2017 season. No, you're right. In fact, they both have a shot at the playoffs, though, especially Omaha. They're one and one right now. And with that Chicago Atlanta game, Atlanta lost and fell to one and one. So Omaha is in the thick of things. As for Pittsburgh, they're 0 and 2 to have any shot. And they have a slim shot. They have to win tonight. Now, let's talk about the Omaha Heart. It seems like every time Omaha plays, we talk about one player, namely their quarterback. Alex Drake, who they received through free agency, has really failed to live up to her potential this season. No, you're right. In fact, she was probably the most hyped quarterback coming into the LFL, maybe with the exception of Angela Rippin, but she has not lived up to the hype. She has all the skills, but we haven't seen it so far this year. And to compound things at running back, Nikki Bernhardt, she's been out all season. They have Shalyn Dorham, a so strong, solid running back. She's powerful, but she lacks the athleticism as Nikki Bernhardt. Now let's talk about Pittsburgh here. There are 0-2, oh a disappointing season by any stretch of the imagination, but you've got three bright spots on this roster, namely wide receiver Jolie Efezekai, defensive end Tracy Wilmer, and cornerback Remy Olenzak. No, you're right. They're the three cornerstones for Pittsburgh, but for tonight, look for quarterback Morgan Spencer. She has to play a big game. Her mechanics have to be tight. She's playing a little stronger than she did earlier in the season, but in running back, Sonia Osborne is out. We just found that out. She's out with an ankle injury, and in her place, we have Astor Cruz, smaller, quicker, but we'll see how she plays tonight. We did get that word late here that in the first half during warm-ups, LFL Medical did not clear Sonia Osselborn, so indeed it will be the New Jersey native Astrid Cruz taking over at the starting running back position. That will do it for us here for the pregame show. It's do or die time in the Eastern Conference. Will Omaha keep its playoff hopes alive 
Or will Pittsburgh capture the franchise's first ever win? Kickoff is next. Back to LFL football night, a scenic setting here at Highmark Stadium. It's the Pittsburgh Rebellion versus the Omaha Heart. Quite the matchup here, Bobby. Quite a matchup. Perfect night for football on the Monongahela River. This is Pennsylvania football. That is Shaylin Durham with a short kick. Wayland Pitts, a great return getting to the edge. And Pittsburgh setting up at midfield to start this one. Quaylen Pitts with that blazing speed. She is a raw talent. She came inside first outside, almost went coast to coast. Morgan Spencer and this Pittsburgh offense who have shown signs of life this season will get their first opportunity here. As I said, they will start from the 25 yard line. That is midfield in the LFL. And what about Morgan Spencer? Up and down season, you could see her numbers, nothing to write home about, but has some potential at the position. She is a solid game manager at the quarterback position. You're right, her stats you're not going to write home about, but she is a solid quarterback. And that is Astrid Cruz, the spell in running back that gets the start ahead of Sonia Osselborn as we meet the Pittsburgh lineup. Jolia Fezekai, wide receiver. Waylon Pitts, your wide receiver. Jacqueline Trejo, tight end. Ginger Kuchba, tight end. Tracy Wilmer, center. Sonia Osselborn, running back. Morgan Spencer, your quarterback. Watch out for number 15, Jolia Fezekai. She is the most dangerous player on this Pittsburgh team. She can score at any time. A high snap sailing over the head of Spencer and deflected up in the air. That'll be intercepted. A great open field interception by Shalyn Durham. Jacqueline Trejo, horrible snap over the head of the quarterback. Morgan Spencer trying to make something happen. She should have probably just thrown the football away. What an early break for Omaha. The Spencer interception. Now gives Omaha the ball back at midfield. We sat down with Alex Drake. As a quarterback, I grade myself as a B. I have a lot to learn. I've made mistakes, but I'm pretty humble. I'm still growing this year. It's been extremely frustrating, but I love the position, so I'm willing to do what it takes to get to the top. It's just going to take me some time. We say it every game. She has the skills. She has to be a smarter quarterback, stay in the pocket, and deliver the football. And that is Shalyn Durham breaking off nine yards. We talked about it in the pregame show. Durham is spelling Nikki Bernhardt, who was penciled in as the starter, looking pretty athletic there. She's a great downhill runner between the tackles, doing exactly that. Nine yards, first play of the game, a strong runner. Look forward to her play that kind of football all night. A second and one after the Durham run. So this offense is set up well early in the first quarter. That is Lindsey Howell in motion, inside handoff. Raina Hullaber, the second running back, will pick up the Omaha first down as we meet the starters for this offense. Raina Hullaber, running back. Jamie Lundberg, wide receiver. Danielle Snyder, tight end. Sarah Jane Thompson, your tight end. Sarah Robinson, your center. Nikki Bernhardt, running back. Alex Drake, your quarterback. This game is on the shoulders of quarterback Alex Drake. She has to perform tonight. Drake back to pass, looking into the end zone and well outside of the end zone. That was intended for Lindsey Howell, the backup quarterback, also their go-to receiver down the field. She was open right there. Alex Drake, we talked about her mechanics. Right there, her last game, one out of eight. That's not going to cut it. The first pass of the game, Lindsey Howe was open for a touchdown. Drake waited too long and threw it out of the end zone. Now a second and ten for the second-year quarterback. Ball at about the 15-yard line of Pittsburgh. This is a design keeper by Drake taking a big hit. Drake did manage four yards on that carry, but paying the price as we meet Pittsburgh starters. Jessica Johnson, corner. Rami Allenzock, corner. Kenya McKeown, strong safety. Jolie Fezekai, 
free safety. Sonia Osborne, middle linebacker. Gina Campisi, defensive end. Jacqueline Trejo, defensive end. Keep your eye on cornerback Jessica Johnson right now at the cornerback position. She is leading the league in tackles. Unbelievable. Meanwhile, Lindsey Howell really being targeted on this offense. Johnson did get the tackle, but not before Omaha picks up another five yards. With Nikki Bernhardt out of the lineup, Lindsey Howell might be the top athlete on the squad right now. She's getting early action right now. She's going to get a lot of action, I think, with Bernhardt out. Setting up a vital fourth and one. That is a look at Shalin Durham, the power back. In all likelihood, the rock is going to go to number 12 here. Drake under center does hand off to Durham. And Durham just stretching out beyond the sticks. That should be another Omaha first down. She is tough to tackle one-on-one. -on -one. She breaks an early tackle right there, gets the first down, but that's where she is tough. Between the tackles, she's tough to stop. A first and goal for this Omaha offense. An offense that's done relatively well in consideration of last year. They have racked up some points. This is Drake territory though. A first and goal from the shotgun. Looking to the end zone a lot of time. And Drake taking off with it. There is the physical side of her game. And you could see slow to get up, now back down. This is what you talked about in the pregame show. Well, she got knocked out of the Los Angeles game, if you remember, with a concussion. Right here, she turns it up. Kind of a smart move because there was an opening, but she can't do that. She's coming off of concussion. And she right there, as you can see, she still has some of the effects. That's Jessica Johnson, the leading tackler in the league, also down. As we take a media timeout, Pittsburgh turning it over early. Macy and Sura coming up with the interception. Back to LFL football night. A look at Alex Drake, who is up. Showed signs of being down. Jessica Johnson also colliding with her at the goal line. Good sign to see both of them up, and they look healthy. Especially Alex Drake. Coming off that concussion, she shouldn't be running the football like that. She's a great athlete. She wants to run, but that's the coach has got to stop her from doing that. A second and goal bunch set. That is Drake just pushing her way into the end zone. That was an obvious design call. I don't know if you go there when your quarterback is just now feared to have had a concussion. She followed the block of Lindsey Burris. A great block, great push off the offensive line, but you're 100% correct. With that concussion, and they have Shaylen Dorham in the backfield, a power back. Don't let your quarterback run the football. She was a little banged up. They're saying it was more of a shoulder injury. So perhaps that's the reason they took a shot there with a yard out in a quarterback that's five foot nine, 160 pounds. Another reverse handoff to Lindsey Howe that time not getting there. That was Tracy Wilmer and the free agent signing Kim Jack. They called her Blanca, former Baltimore Charge. I love to see that. They went out and signed one of the top defensive players from the LFL, from the Baltimore Charm, and she came in and she is playing like she did in Baltimore, one of the top DEs in the LFL. Let's meet the defensive starters for Omaha. Macy and Sarah, corner. Raina Holabar, corner. Sarah Jane Thompson, strong safety. Shalyn Durham, free safety. Jacqueline Good, linebacker. Danielle Snyder, defensive end. Lindsey Burst. Defensive for Omaha to have any success tonight, they have to apply pressure by D.E., Sarah Robinson, and Kelsey Lane. Astrid Cruz. That could have been a late hit by Raina Holobar, but Cruz coming up big early in this one. That was a five-yard carry. As we talked about, Cruz is spelling the starter, Sonia Osselborn, who is out. When I spoke to Coach Joe DeBerry, he really liked the talent and the upside on Cruz. You got to hand it to her, not knowing she was going to start tonight. With Osselborn out, she's really putting on a show so far. Standing only at five foot one, but very elusive and more athletic than Osselborn is Cruz. They're going to go back to Cruz. That is Raina Holliburn all over it. That'll only be a gain of a yard. And in fact, we're going back to Coach Joe DeBerry of Pittsburgh. We talked to him about where is this team right now. Been a first year head coach. It's definitely been more difficult to get things rolling here. 
Um, some of the girls came into camp a little out of shape. We've been working on that. We're definitely on an upwards trajectory. We're looking forward to the future. Keep growing as a team. Keep getting better every week. He is getting it done. Some of these players came in like Osborne and Campisi out of shape. He's got them playing good football right now. A third and five completion. The ball did come loose, but that was after Wilmer was down on the ground. A three-yard completion. This is how Spencer's developing as a quarterback. Taking serious pressure. She just dumps it off, finds a receiver. Tracy Wilmer gets yard. It's not the first down, but smart play by Morgan Spencer. Spencer looking good after that interception early. She's an erratic passer. That is one of the big knocks on her. She lacks consistency. And this Omaha defense will get after her. Absolutely. But right there, that move, she would usually take a sack or get picked off. Right there, she went to the third receiver in the food chain and just dumped it off, got yardage instead of a sack. A fourth and two for this Pittsburgh offense. And that looked like Omaha jumped clearly. We do have a penalty. That could be a big penalty on this defense as this offense was facing a fourth and two. Smart move again by Spencer, using the cadence as a weapon and drew Omaha off. Michael Jarosinski, our head referee, discussing it with his crew. Early indication is that this will go against Omaha. Offsides, defense number six. Five-yard penalty results in a first down. That penalty on Chelsea Hoffman, the rookie defensive end, and that'll give Pittsburgh a first down. That's what I love about the development of Morgan Spencer. She doesn't have the skill level of an Ashley Salerno in Los Angeles, but right there, using the cadence as a weapon, she is developing into a very capable quarterback. Now a first and 10 play for this offense. Spencer back to pass, big pressure by Sarah Robinson. And that ball looked like it came out. Omaha did recover the fumble, but are they calling it a fumble or an incomplete pass? It looked like an incomplete pass. They might be giving it to him, though. I think she was trying to get the ball to Jessica Johnson. She was too late. She got serious pressure. Johnson was open. She should have threw it right there. I think she was trying to throw it. And give credit to Sarah Robinson not falling for the pump fake and staying on the ground with Spencer. That ball looked like it came out, almost kind of a tuck rule. But it seems like they're going to call it an incomplete pass. Omaha, Omaha is challenging. Has challenged the ruling on the field of a fumble. The previous play is under review. I think that's a solid challenge. It looked like she was tucking the ball and not necessarily throwing it. She saw Jessica Johnson there. Now, was the ball coming up as a fumble or was her arm going forward? Right there, it looks like she was trying to go forward with it. Tomato, tomato. For me, it appeared like she was going to tuck it. You could see right there she changed her mind as she saw Sarah Robinson coming up. And I think she really tucked this ball. That should be a fumble. Ball Omaha. Now that I saw the second replay, I think you're 100% correct. That looked like Tom Brady. After review, it was determined that the quarterback lost possession of the football, recovered by Omaha. First and 10, Omaha from the 19-yard line. A big-time challenge by offensive coordinator and head coach Dante Allen paying off for Omaha. It sure was. I thought it was a pass at first, but on the replay, you can clearly see she's bringing it down to tuck it. So Drake getting yet another opportunity on the Pitt Pittsburgh side of the ball. You can't wish for better field position than this. This is where Drake has to come through. We talk about her talent level, how good she can be, but right now she has to produce. A first and 10 ball at the Pittsburgh 19 yard line. Drake back to pass again into the end zone. Well short of the receiver and that is intercepted by Jolie Efezekai. It looked like a replay of Drake's first pass. Way late on the timing, she threw it and it's not even close to where it should have been. It floated up on the inside and Efezekai came up with a great play. That's all on quarterback Alex Drake. But Abezakai, she knows the tendencies of Drake. They played together in New England. That is an excellent point. Standing at six foot one, the tallest free safety in the LFL, an absolute ball hawk back there. A first and ten ball at the six yard line. Pittsburgh did get it back after that interception or fumble. 
That is Spencer down the field, overshooting at Fezekai and throwing into that sunshine. Great technique by the cornerbacks of Omaha. They jammed the Fezekai off the line. She couldn't get deep down there for that post pattern. And what happened? Spencer way overthrew it. He's a great corner play. If I'm Pittsburgh, I'm loving the matchup of Shalin Durham on Jolie Efezekai. That is an outmatch any day of the week. It should be fun to watch. They're both good athletes. Efezekai, I'd throw it to her all the time. She is a beast at wide receiver. A second and ten. That looked like Kim Jack may have jumped. This should be a false start on Pittsburgh. You can expect that. Jack is new to the Pittsburgh lineup. She's new to hearing the signal calling by Morgan Spencer, and she totally jumped right there. We will see if head referee Michael Jarosinski and his crew agree. False start, number 17, offense. Half a distance to the goal, replay second down. That is the call backing up the Pittsburgh offense, who is already at the six-yard line. They'll be down to about the three now. You can see Spencer and Astrid Cruz talking it over. And Omaha right now stacking six defenders in the box. Spencer rolling left, throwing down the field, off her back foot. And that is complete to the tight end, Kim Jack, making up for that false start earlier. We mentioned how Spencer becoming more cerebral as a quarterback. She saw the blitz. She saw, as you mentioned, all six players, six of the seven, at the line of scrimmage, and she knew you could go deep. It wasn't a great throw, but it was effective. Who knew Kim Jack could get down the field like that, showing some speed and then coming back to the ball? Coming back, making a great grab, and again, a great play by Spencer. Not a great pass, but they moved the ball down the field. A first and ten, Spencer back to pass, finding a lane and now taking off with it. An ill-advised jump. That was Sarah Robinson and Jacqueline Good on the stop. And that'll bring us to the end of the first quarter. It's the visiting Omaha Heart up six to nothing. Back to Highmark Stadium in downtown Pittsburgh. And the Pittsburgh natives are out enjoying this beautiful afternoon. On what river was that, Mitch? That's alongside the Mahalaga Laga River. That's the Monongahela. Monongahela River, not fair. You are a Pennsylvania native. And look at this, the Pennsylvania team finally in business near the midfield. Morgan Spencer and company starting at the 20-yard line. A nice-looking reverse. That is Astrid Cruz getting to the outside. And she's gone. Shalyn Durham cannot get there. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. What a great call by offensive coordinator Jermont Kynes. They had the reverse. They put Cruz out wide at the wide receiver. Came around on reverse. She has the speed to get around the corner, and she goes coast to coast. What a call, and what a run by Cruz. Wow. you got to like offensive coordinator Jermont Kynes adapting this offense literally during the pregame from Sonia Osselborn to Astrid Cruz, taking advantage of Cruz's speed versus Osselborn's might. You're right. He changes the game plan on the fly. With Osborne in the game, it's a power game. With Cruz in, you go outside with a speed like that. You're right. Great call by Kynes. And a poor snap. It looked like Morgan Spencer never got the handle. So our score will remain 6 to nothing. We've seen this before from this team. The ball was there. Trejo got the ball up. I think Spencer just pulled out early. That'll keep our score 6-6. Six to six. That is a look at Jacqueline Trejo, the starting center, not able to get the ball back to Spencer. That'll cost him a point. That's twice now on the center quarterback exchange. The first play of the game went over Spencer's head, and now these key points, you can't give up like that. You have to put the points on the board. Omaha's offense going back to work, an offense that's ranked fifth in the league. They've had a very strong run game throughout most of the 2017 season. But as we talked about, nothing through the air that'll impress you. That is a first down handoff to Jackie Good. Actually, that is Lindsey Noble. And Noble gaining four yards. Lindsey Noble, a great all-around athlete. The first year for Omaha, she actually played quarterback. Now they play her in a number of positions. Noble signing midseason a number of veterans that had played the first season when Omaha did have some success have decided to rejoin the team. 
I really like how Dante Allen brought this team together, brought the veterans back. All they need, all they need now is Alex Drake to start connecting on some passes. And this is another design keeper for Alex Drake and nothing. That is Kim Jack, better known as Blanca. That's right, the Street Fighter character. She loves that. And that's become her persona. Watch her pad level. A defensive end, she sheds the block, goes right into Drake. Again, I'm not sure why they're, why they're running Alex Drake. The quarterback coming off a concussion injury, they're running right into one of the greatest defensive ends in the LFL. The Pittsburgh crowd coming to life on a third and seven for this offense. Drake will remain in the shotgun. As a running back flanked to each side, Shalin Durham. And now Raina Holaber. A little over eight minutes remaining. Inside handoff, Shalin Durham. And big collision there with Jolie Fizekai. We've got Durham mic'd up. Let's listen in. Wow, that's like two freight trains on the same track going head to head. When it looked like Dorm was easily going to get the first down, Fezakai stopped her short. A fourth and one. That is Raina Holliber in motion. Handoff, Shalin Durham. Durham getting to the outside, and that'll be plenty for another Omaha first down. You really got to like the way she keeps her shoulders even with the line of scrimmage and turns downfield. She doesn't run outside. She goes and attacks the players right there. They needed short yardage, and they got it. Head coach Joe DeBerry said his number one goal coming into this game was to be competitive getting into the second half of this game. They're at least there now. I like the way he doesn't rest on his laurels with a player he has. He goes out and gets free agents, brings in Kim Jack. A first and ten play, Drake buying time with her legs. Now lofting it into the end zone, a dangerous pass. You could see Efezekai just waiting on that football. This is where the question marks come out about Alex Drake. She moved in the pocket well, created more time. She had a receiver open in the end zone, but she was short. If she floats that out in the corner, lets the receiver run under, it's a touchdown. That ball should have been picked off by Efezekai. Throwing off her back foot, you know better than anybody, Bobby, as a quarterback. That football is just going to loft on you, and that is going to be dangerous no matter what league you're throwing in. Absolutely, and she has the strong arm, even throwing off the back foot to get it out there. I don't know what she did with that pass. An inside handoff to Jacqueline Good. Good will gain seven yards. That has been the only success this Omaha offense has had is with the run game. The big uglies up front, they're getting it done tonight. Burrs, Wigman, and Jackie Good, they are plowing that defensive line of Pittsburgh out. Now a third and three ball at the six-yard line. Omaha's been able to move the ball. They've only come up with six points. They'll need to capitalize on this field position. Severs flank to each side. That is Lindsey Noble in motion. Now Drake taking it herself again, forced out of bounds. By Kenya McKeon, that'll be a loss of a yard. You really got to question that play selection by Dante Allen. You have Shalin Dorham and Jackie Good getting big chunks of yardage behind that big offensive line, and you give it to your quarterback, and she gets stuffed. And trying to get to the outside with a quarterback that's not really fast in Alex Drake. Not a good play selection at all. Again, give the ball to Dorham. She's on fire right now. A fourth and four. Ball at the seven-yard line of Pittsburgh. Break back to pass from the shotgun. Eluding the pass rush, rolling left, and now just losing her footing. And that'll be a turnover on downs. Give credit to this Pittsburgh defense. The corner hit comes off. Great flat line speed, a great reverse move. Throw the football, though. It's fourth down. You have to get rid of it. Right there, you just turn the ball back to Pittsburgh. Exactly, Bobby. You got to take a shot at the end zone. Even if you throw an interception in that situation, Pittsburgh's going to get the ball back about the same spot. A little drawing back and forth. That's Shalin Durham. You could see a little bit of that frustration now with this Omaha team. You made a great point, though, Mitch. 
the quarterback. We talked about how Alex Craig is not becoming the performer she thought she was going to be right there. She's got to know it's fourth down. Throw it up. Give your players a chance. A first and ten toss play to Astrid Cruz. Great defensive play there by Sarah Robinson. Sarah Robinson having one heck of a first half. Robinson's a solid player. That whole defense, they're playing with some chaos out there. I like what Dante Allen and defensive coordinator, Coach Good, they got him playing good football. I like Astrid Cruz giving the dimension of being able to get to the outside. Osselborn was a very north-south runner. Cruz gives you a bit of everything. I like the fact that she stepped up her game. She was not supposed to start tonight. He gets thrown in there, and then she's playing great football at the running back position. A second and 10 fake the toss to Cruz. Now over the middle. That was just a duck. And I don't know. Did they do a lot of duck shooting around here in Pennsylvania? Because that thing hung wow. for quite a bit. That was not a good play by Morgan Spencer. That was floating up there. You're right. A lot of hunters up here. I, heard, I thought I heard a couple shotguns go off there. She threw it up for grabs. She got very lucky that didn't get picked. That is something that offensive coordinator Jermont Kynes has stressed with Spencer is her footwork. She throws off her back foot backpedaling a lot, and that ends up with key turnovers throughout the season. The ball just floats. When you throw off your back foot, that's what happens. A little better toss. Good touch there by Spencer. That is complete to Astrid Cruz, a gain of seven. A swing route out of the backfield. Now, you see her feet, you throw with your feet. She had her feet set. She threw a little uh, velvet touch there. A great catch by, by Astrid, Astrid Cruz. And Cruz is playing amazing football tonight. Cruz showing you hands out of the backfield. You don't get a lot of that with running backs in this game. They're either runners or receivers. Cruz is one of those hybrid type running backs. Absolutely. Jerome Kynes, the offensive coordinator, knew what he was doing when he, he started Cruz when he found out Osselborn couldn't play. A fourth and three reverse. That is Quaylen Pitts. And Pitts trying to get to the outside. Look at that swarming Omaha defense. Only gaining a yard. That'll turn it back over. Great play by Jackie Good. She didn't fall for that pl play fake. She kept containment outside. Pitts could not do anything. Just an outstanding defensive play. Raina Holobar, the running back coming through. And that's Sonia Osselborn, the injured running back, coaching up Pitts. She's coaching up Pitts. She wants to be in the game, but I don't know what she's coaching for because there was nothing there for Pitts. She has outside speed around the edge. There was no edge there. Give credit both of these defenses. They're turning the ball back over to their offense. Coming into tonight's game, Pittsburgh's defense was a plus five turnover margin, and Omaha's at plus two. Those are impressive. I'm really impressed by both teams the way they're playing solid football tonight. The only thing that's not happening is Drake's passing game. And that is Drake on cue completing this one. That is to Lindsey Howell, their number one receiver. That'll be a gain of eight yards. That's why all the scouts in the LFL think Drake had such a high ceiling and potential. When she stays in the pocket, sets her feet, and throws balls like that, she looks as good as any quarterback in the league. On paper, she's kind of like a Ryan Leaf for some of you older football quarterbacks wow, back there. Ryan Leaf. Well, look, she looks the part just like Ryan Leaf. Nice stature, good arm, and has, like you said, the potential to deliver the ball. Good analogy. Ryan Leaf was the number one pick with all the skill levels in the world, just like Alex Drake. We haven't seen it yet, though. That'll take us to the two-minute warning in a game that's tied up 6-6 six to six with Omaha threatening. Back to LFL football night here at Highmark Stadium on a beautiful night in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. It is a crisp night. This is classic Pennsylvania football. Alex Drake in this offense going back to work from the shotgun. A little misdirection handoff. That's Shalin Durham. Durham will gain a yard. You can see a lot of collisions in there. We've got Durham mic'd up. This is a very physical ball game, at least here in the first half. That's the play that broke for a big yardage before. Pittsburgh was all over. They didn't fall for that trap. A third and one for Alex Drake in this offense. That is Lindsey Noble in motion. Handoff Holliber getting to the outside. Great seal blocking. Touchdown, Omaha. Lindsey Noble. I can't. Is that the Dougie? I haven't seen the Dougie in about five years. 
A little bit of a retro move here from the Omaha Heart, but look at the seal blocking on this. That's noble. She got outside. She brought the corner back in with nobody on the outside. She took oh, it in the end zone. Great call, great run, great blocking again by Omaha. They're doing it on the ground. A pair of smaller running backs making a big difference here in the first half. Pittsburgh with Astrid Cruz and Omaha with Raina Holliber. Can you imagine if Omaha's passing game started clicking? They've only completed one pass so far this half. That is Drake on the extra point attempt. Again, using Drake's side to try to get to the outside. That is just ugly. I don't care if you converted that. You cannot continue to risk your quarterback. Not at all. And she had a concussion in their last game in Los Angeles. It's just bad play calling. As we said, Drake did convert. That'll give Omaha a 13-6 lead with a minute, a little over a minute remaining here. This is a good football game on both sides. Yeah, we're getting on Drake a little bit because we're non-passing, but this is good football. Benster back to drop, showing that arm strength. Down the field and connecting. That is Jolia Fazekai, and that is a 34-yard completion. What a great pre-snap read by Morgan Spencer. They were in straight man coverage, and again, a Fezekai was matched up on Durham. A mismatch because she's 6-1. Spencer just gives her a shot. Not a great pass, but got her a chance to get up there and get it. Gets it down to the one-yard line. What a play by a Fezekai, and a really good throw by Morgan Spencer. Durham simply does not have the speed to keep up with the Fezekai. And now a first and goal play. Look at that Omaha defense led by Jacqueline Good. That'll be a no game carry actually. As the clock continues to run, Pittsburgh does not have any timeout. So they need to be watching the football here. More importantly, the clock as we are under 45 seconds. Jackie Good, we talked about her all last year. She is a stopper in the middle. They ran right at her, thinking they're going to get it easily, get one yard, and she said, no way. The clock continues to run. We are under 30 seconds remaining, and no timeouts again for Pittsburgh. Spencer under center, handoff to Cruz, and cruising into the end zone for a Pittsburgh touchdown. I love that little jab step by Cruz. That one little jab step, Amanda Hogan came in and she said, boom, bam, went, went, went outside. What a play by Cruz. Morgan Spencer also selling this play a bit. Watch that jab step, boom, then she takes it outside. Hogan gets sucked in, straight on right in the face. I'm gonna tell you what, Cruz is coming into her own tonight. I think you can't give number three enough credit coming into this game. As late as the pregame warm-up, Sonia Osselborn was to start and Cruz had to immediately get ready to start in this game. That is Spencer back to pass on the extra point and connecting with the Fezekai. What about the size in the hands on number 15? She is the Megatron of the LFL. Look at that size. Right now, the Omaha secondary, very porous. Look, nobody covered her. They missed her. It should be one-on-one -on -one right there. Storm didn't find her. Wide open in the end zone. Bad play by Jackie Good. Yeah, you could see a Fezekai just wailing her hands wide open in the back of the end zone. Morgan Spencer again. I, it's so great the way she's playing quarterback. She doesn't look pretty back there, but she's getting it done. And with that effort, Pittsburgh takes the lead at 14 to 13. Alex Drake now having 20 seconds in two timeouts to try to mount a rally. Drake back to pass, taking off with it. And here comes that defense, Drake gaining five yards. The clock continue to run now, Omaha electing to call a timeout. Again, you have to have confidence in your arm. You have a trip set, you have the receivers all running nine routes down there, and she turns it up, took a lot of time off the clock, but he needs more confidence throwing the football. This is a big opportunity for this Pittsburgh defense to really step up and a big moral boost if you go into the locker room with a one-point lead. I'm sure right now, Coach Good, the defensive coordinator for Omaha, is putting in a pre-bank cover. Line. She, lined up on, she lined up on the outside, and there's still a running back. So I kept going, and she was gone. There was no corner there. 
I do never cover that chick. Ever. The only reason why I picked her up is because she was so low. No, I'm fine. I'm just not going to get yelled at for some shit that's not mine. So we just need to make the corrections so the people line up right. I'm not bitching. I'm just saying I want to make it right. That's frustration being down to an expansion team, 13 to 14. Some of that is going to come to the surface. Well, that's Jackie Good talking about their touchdown pass. She was the last one in the picture, but it was actually Gorham's, Gorham was supposed to a cover a Fezekai, and they were yelling at Jackie Good, and that wasn't her receiver. Omaha has time for one more play here. Great back to pass, has the arm to get it down the field. Now the pressure getting to Drake. Great getting to the outside and tiptoeing along the sideline. But they're going to mark her out. Only a one-yard gain. Colliding with Tracy Wilmer, and Wilmer still down. That'll bring us to the end of the first half. It has been a back-and-forth physical battle with the hometown Pittsburgh Rebellion up 14-13. to Back with halftime after this. Welcome back to LFL Football Night. Mitch Mortaza alongside Bobby Huco. A halftime score of 14 to 13. The good guys up if you're a Pittsburgh Rebellion fan. This is an 0-2 team, yet they're up on the Omaha Heart here at halftime. Are you impressed by their effort at all? Yes, I am. They are really coming together as a team. I'm really impressed by quarterback Morgan Spencer. She's playing good game control football at that quarterback position. Even her interception that was on a deflected ball, she looks rock solid. What about the other quarterback, Alex Drake? We talked about her in the pregame show having a tough 2017 season, and that's carrying over to this game, going one of four in the first half, also throwing an interception. I'm not sure why she wants to run the football. She is a great thrower, one of four. That's not going to cut it in the LFL. And you see what happened when, when she runs the football? She gets banged up and gets knocked out of the game. It happened last game. Hopefully it doesn't happen tonight. Did not do anything through the air, really, but she did manage some scoring. Let's take a look at the first half scores. The first one was Alex Drake from one yard out, giving an Omaha an early six to nothing lead. Then Pittsburgh answered, but not till the second quarter on the legs of Rachel Manzo from 30 yards out. That gave us a tie game of six to six. Then it was Omaha's veteran running back, Raina Holabar, from 10 yards out, giving Omaha a 13 to six lead. Right before the half, Manzo was not done with under a minute remaining, converting on this one yard touchdown run. That gives us our halftime score of 14 to 13, Pittsburgh up. 
Let's take a look at the halftime stats. As you can see, they're two evenly matched teams. The difference is the passing yardage. Somehow, Omaha quarterback Alex Drake, she has to deliver in the second half. That'll do it for us here at halftime. One of these two teams will keep their playoff hopes alive. The second half kickoff is next. Back for the second half on a beautiful night here in Pittsburgh as we look at our quarterbacks through one half of play. Morgan Spencer clearly outplayed Alex Drake in the first half. She was four out of seven, 59 yards. Drake only one out of four with one interception. In her previous game, she was one out of eight. Alex Drake needs to step her game up. And speaking of Morgan Spencer, look at the leg. An ill-advised return here by Lindsey Noble. That's one you just let sit in the end zone. And she'll get it out to about the 13-yard line. That could have been disastrous for Omaha. Lindsey Noble, a veteran player, she knows better than to bring that out. That was deep in the end zone. Just take a knee. Noble did manage to get it out to the 13-yard line. And that is where Alex Drake will go to work with this offense. Drake was one of four, as we talked about, through an interception. So not exactly the start she was hoping for. Not at all, but for those bad stats, they are only down one point coming into the second half. Drake under center, hands it off to Shalin Durham. And Durham gaining four yards. Tracy Wilmer on the tackle. Shalin Durham is just a grinder. There was absolutely nothing there. She squared her shoulders, and she made like hamburger out of that defensive line, and there was no holes. What I like about her, she doesn't do a lot of dancing, as you mentioned. She's going to get what's there. She's a consistent three to four yard average back. Now a second and six. They fake it to Durham, this time a reverse to Noble. And Noble gaining three yards, trying to use some of that speed with number four. They've tried a couple times to go outside, and it's not working. They are totally getting it done between the tackles, but the outside running game, not there. A third and three. This Pittsburgh team has got to have, they had to have great momentum going into halftime, being up by a point against an established franchise like Omaha. And that is Alex Drake keeping it herself for six yards. So they continue to use the feet of Alex Drake. I don't like the call, but what I do like, that call there, she's not taking a big hit. She got good yardage, and she got out of bounds, didn't take a hit to her head. That six-yard Drake run setting up this offense with a first and ten. Ball on the Pittsburgh side of the field. Like I said, this offense has moved the ball throughout the first half, just has not had a lot of points to show for it. A first and ten play, that is Howell in motion. Shalin Durham, big time collision with the Fezekai. Those two met in the first half. Let's listen in. Those two might end up being best friends and roommates as much as they're seeing of each other tonight. They're matching up on one-to-one -one coverage. Hits like that, that's the second time. Great hit by a Fezekai from that safety position. And you could see Shalin Durham there limping, tapping herself out of this game. That could be a big loss. They do have Rainer Hollibar, and you could see Hollibar is in the game, but that would be a big loss for this offense. That would be a huge loss. She has been the entire offense in the first half, and she's replacing Nikki Bernhardt, who's out. So that'd be their top two running backs out. A second and five after that Durham run. Drake seems to be more comfortable in the shotgun. Dropping back to pass, rolling right. And just content to just take off with it and take the punishment from Kim Jack. She's done that all year. She leaves the pocket too early. You take your drop, you step up, throw the football, deliver the ball. She takes off running too many times. I think there are opportunities where you, like you said, just throw the football away, literally live to play another down. Throw it away or throw it to your receiver. We haven't even seen any completions if we saw one. That was it for the whole the whole game so far. A third and three ball at the Pittsburgh 17-yard line. From the shotgun, Drake just a quick pass in the flat complete. And that is Noble breaking through arm tackles and getting down to about the five-yard line. Now, that's okay, though. It wasn't a big play, a big pass. She took her drop, a swing pattern to Noble out of the backfield. Just get her the football in free space and let her do her stuff. Good play by both players. 
That is a good play call. Get Drake's confidence up. Get her comfortable with throwing the football. Completion, easy completion, not going to get picked off. She works on her steps, and they move the football down the field. A first and goal for the Omaha offense. Down a point here in the third quarter. That is Lindsey Howell in motion again. A poor snap at the feet of Drake. That's all Alex Drake could do was to recover that. That'll be a loss of four yards. Again, the snap killing the play. They had it there, but she couldn't field it. It wasn't a, a crazy bad snap, but she couldn't handle it all, and it killed the play. You cannot make those kinds of errors here in the red zone, especially with an expansion team that you're down to. Absolutely. I, I hate to say it again about Drake, but she's got to steal that football and make a play. Now a second and goal. They lost four yards, so ball's back at about the 10-yard line. That's Noble in motion at the top of the screen. That is a design keeper to the outside. Uh, Drake gaining about five yards on that keeper. Good run by her again. She didn't take the hit. That play I don't mind because she's running toward the sideline, short side of the field. She got her yardage and got out of bounds. Didn't take a hit. They seem to want to work the outside when Drake runs the ball. We need a big stop. We need a big stop, y'all. 35. Big stop. Let's go. There's the leadership of Jolia Fazekai having a great ball game already and stepping up on the defensive side. He's having a great game on both sides of the football. A third and goal play. Look at Kim Jack just blow up the front line of Omaha and tackle Drake for a loss. That's how she played in Baltimore. That burst off the line of scrimmage just got by a swim technique over the top. Nobody there to block her and brings Drake down. What a midseason addition number 19 has been. Blanca is just a destructive force. She says she loves to play physical. She's playing like it was back in Baltimore in her all-fantasy year. She, she might be making a run all-fantasy again here in Pittsburgh. A fourth and goal. Highmark Stadium coming to life. Alex Drake in this offense trying to get back on top here. From the shotgun looking into the end zone, into the back of the end zone. And that is caught. Lindsey Howell, touchdown Omaha. That's what we're talking about right there. Give your receivers a chance. Step up in the pocket, throw it. Howell wasn't that open, but Alex Drake laid it out there, gave her a chance to catch it. One-on-one -on -one coverage. Lindsey Howell stabs it. Great catch in the back of the end zone. Howell, not exactly an impressive specimen physically but obviously delivering for this offense. Just a great all-around sports player and a lot of different sports on this team. We've seen her at quarterback, we've seen her running back, we've seen her receiver. She makes plays like that. Al in her fourth season with Omaha. Omaha not having a deep down the field threat. Maybe Howell's the answer there. I'll tell you where Howell is the answer to. The confidence of Alex Drake right there making a great catch. That's got to help the confidence of quarterback Drake. Michael Jarosinski on the call. Delay a game, offense number 16. The extra point will be retried. That is a big time play in a game that's 19 to 14. You need every point you can get. And that's a delay a game on Alex Drake. That's a rookie mistake by Drake. And she's a veteran quarterback. You can't do that. That can cost your team points. Now the extra point attempt, ball at the six yard line. Another low snap, Drake, half speed, trying to get into the end zone. A lot of collisions, but Drake does convert. That'll put Omaha on top, 20 to 14, and Drake is very slow getting up. That's not a good sign. This is what we're talking about. You don't want to get your star quarterback hit like this. You actually scored points. A great block by Holobar on pitch to get her to the end zone, but you don't want to see your quarterback take shots like that. You see it right here. She gets to the edge. Watch that block outside by Holobar. And then she plows into the DB head first, and she's coming off of a concussion. Alex Drake really trying to use her size, especially down there around the goal line. But that's going to catch up to you at some point. She has to protect herself, and she's not doing it right now. She's trying to plow into defensive backs and linebackers, and you're going to get hurt like she did against Los Angeles. Morgan Spencer, the league's fifth-ranked quarterback. 
will bring the offense back on the field, trailing by six. That is a handoff to Cruz, and Cruz cutting back inside. He'll gain three yards on the carry. You gotta like the way Cruz runs the football. She has a great base. You see that cut there? Because she's not over leaning one way or the other. He cut inside, got positive yardage. But getting back to Morgan Spencer, I think a lot has to do with the offensive coordinator they brought in, Jermont Kynes from Syracuse. Her game changed when he started calling plays. Cruz will look to get a majority of the carries. You could see Alex Drake still speaking to the LFL medical staff. Her return, we're being told now, is doubtful. That's not a good sign if she's still talking to doctors right now. A second and seven handoff. That's Remy Olenzak, the veteran running back who's currently listed as the third running back on this death chart. In fact, we sat down with Olenzak and talked to her about this Pittsburgh Rebellion. We're going to compete to the best of our abilities these last two games. This game is pretty evenly matched. But what I'm really looking forward to is the offseason, where we can be a more cohesive unit and have more time to build the future of our team. That's a great point by Remy Olenzak, the leader. She's a Pittsburgh native. But this team, they're playing good football now. They got a shot to make the playoffs, outside shot. But watch out for them in 2018. That is the thing. With a win, Pittsburgh will keep pace with the Atlanta steam. And just behind the Chicago Bliss, that was a completion. It looks to be with Quaylen Pitts, and we've got some fists flying here. Pitts taking exception to the end of that play. And now that's number six, Chelsea Hoffman getting into it. This game is about to get ugly. They've got to get these two separated. Calm your fucking self. Calm your fucking self. Calm yourself. Wow, did you see all the Omaha players back off when Megatron showed up? He said, calm down, they walked away. And you could see here, that is the completion to Pitts. And then Jacqueline Good just ripping that football away. The result of the play is an interception by Omaha. After the play, personal foul, unne unnecessary roughness. Pittsburgh number 18, 10-yard penalty, automatic first down. So not only does Pittsburgh lose possession, they're going to get an unsportsmanlike call tacked on to the end of that. Not a good play at all by Quaylen Pitts. She had the ball. Good pass by Morgan Spencer. Good came in flat out, just stole it from her. And Pitts was still upset. She started throwing punches, which totally penalized Pittsburgh now. So Pittsburgh will once again have to play some defense. Down 20 to 14, and that is head coach Joe DeBerry looking at the replay. And he had the challenge flag. I'm not sure what he's trying to challenge here or even exploring the challenge. It was an unsportsmanlike call. Maybe he's challenging possession on the interception. That's the only thing he could challenge, and that was a clear hey, interception. Bench, I'm fucking quarterback. She's not going to know how to hand it off. She doesn't know what's going on. She doesn't know what's going on. She doesn't fucking know. Delay a game, offense number 11, five yard penalty, still first down. The Fezekai, clearly not a fan of Lindsey Howell. You gotta love it, a Fezekai saw there's a backup quarterback in the game, trying to get inside her head, talking some trash, and it worked. Lindsey Howell did not have the most impressive of quarterback resumes in 2016, hence they went out and signed Alex Drake. A first and 15 handoff. Oh, you could see Shalyn Durham just tiptoeing and getting lit up by Tracy Wilmer. Durham pulled up. She's got a leg injury right there. She became a target for a Fezekai. You could see Durham in no hurry to get up after that and still down on the ground. Look, look. He hits his blood in my fucking blood. I'm taking people out just like they're taking my fucking team out. That's right. A Fezekai fast becoming one of the bigger talkers in the game, at least. She is the leader for Pittsburgh right now. She's taking them out one at a time and loving it. Alex Drake still on the sideline as part of the concussion protocol. This time a handoff to Jacqueline Good. And Good gaining four yards on the carry. Omaha with two of their top players out right now. They still have the lead with a backup quarterback, Lindsey Howe, in the game. Don't be surprised if they keep this ball on the ground 
trying to run clock. As we said, Hal's resume, not one of the better ones when it comes to throwing the football. And now with Shalin Durham out, we're probably going to get a nice dosage of Reina Holabar and perhaps Howell with just quarterback keepers. I don't think they'll try to throw it, maybe have a turnover. They have the lead. They're going to try to protect that lead somehow. This should be the final play of the third quarter. And that's an end around handoff to number 18. That is Courtney Jensen, the recently signed rookie wide receiver. And they're going into the well here, trying to pull more and more people. With all their running backs hurt, their quarterback out, they will bring some other players in. And that is Tracy Wilmer going down for Pittsburgh. It is a hot night. A lot of the athletes are dehydrated. As we come to the end of three quarters of play, Omaha up 20 to 14. Back for the final 10 minutes of play here from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. As the sun is starting to set, people are still out on those boats. A great setting for LFL football. Great seeing all those boats out on the Monongahela River, one of my favorite rivers in the country. I'm not going to even attempt that. I've had problems with that all season. I know the Ohio River and the, what is it, the Appalachian, they all Allegheny, come together. The Allegheny. Or the Allegheny, correct. And they all come together at Promontis. Fair enough. Promontis. That's a sandwich place, legendary here in Pittsburgh. If you're in town, check it out. Back to football on a fourth and nine. Hal back to pass, evading the rush, now scrambling to the right, cutting back. Everybody missing Hal. That is a gain of seven yards. That'll be about two yards short. And Pittsburgh will take over on downs. This is what Lindsey Howe gives you. He's a feisty competitor. She will not give up. She breaks tackles. She almost gets the first break. Two tackles. The fence guy can't get her down. But she gets torn down two yards short. Ball goes back to Pittsburgh. Throw it. She was wide open. Okay, but remember, use your leg, get outside, dump it off to him. You can put a move on somebody back there, right? That's Lindsey Howell. I've never say, I've never heard a player say I was scared. I don't think she wanted to say scared. I think she should have just said she was going to get tackled, but maybe she was obviously scared. It just feels at times Lindsey Howell, we saw it all through the 2016 season, is just not meant for the quarterback position. And we're seeing that here tonight. Yep, that's what happened when she was the starter for Omaha, but there's nobody left and she has to play. And, and she doesn't make good decisions like right there. She should have thrown the football. A key drive here for Pittsburgh. Morgan Spencer eluding the rush and tiptoeing her way up the sideline. They're gonna credit her for seven yards on this carry. Now you can tell Morgan Spencer is not scared. Deep in the end zone. She sheds two tacklers, takes it down the sideline. That's an athlete right there. This is where names are made. Morgan Spencer here on the national stage has an opportunity to capture the first ever franchise win for Pittsburgh. Her game has completely turned around. The old Morgan Spencer might have ran out of the back of the end zone. She stayed composed and made a big gain out of it. That is Astrid Cruz in motion, cutting back to the inside. A good, solid run by number three, gaining seven yards. That'll be enough for a Pittsburgh first down. She's going to become a great running back. The way she keeps her weight under her pads, she can make a jump cut like that, make something out of nothing. Love her at running back. Another advantage Cruz has over most backs is her size. At 5'1", a lot of defensive players cannot find you behind your blocks. Absolutely right. And she makes those short cuts, that jump back like that. She gets lost in all the riffraff, and then she makes a big game. A first and 10. They're going to keep it on the ground with Cruz. And Cruz showing a lot of confidence. However, only gaining three yards. That was Jacqueline Good on the tackle. That front line of Pittsburgh right now, Trejo, Pitts, and Campisi, they're blowing some holes open on that Omaha line. Now a second and seven, plenty of time remaining in this game, and Pittsburgh does have two timeouts remaining in a six-point ball game. This is exactly what we were hoping for into the fourth quarter, and more importantly, what Pittsburgh head coach Joe DeBerry said during the week, we want to be competitive going into the fourth quarter. Absolutely, and Morgan Spencer, we talked about it. They have to win to keep their playoff hopes alive. Another handoff to Cruz that looked to be a little bit of confusion in the backfield. 
A gain of two for Cruz. A lot of confusion in the backfield. She made something out of nothing. Luckily, she got two yards, but that was definitely miscommunication between Morgan Spencer and Cruz. Now it looks like they've got Misty Gonzalez in its center. They've, you've seen them have some failures there with the snap. And I don't know if that had anything to do with the blocking scheme, but there was some confusion on that play. Offensive coordinator, Jermont Kynes, he said they like cross trainers on the front line. They can adjust on the play center, tackle, move around a little bit. And we, we've got a timeout, Pittsburgh. They trail this one 20 to 14. Back to fourth quarter action of LFL football night. Mitch Mortazzo alongside Bobby Huco in a great ball game here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania with the Rebellion down 20 to 14. Now Spencer taking a shot down the field and just overthrowing a Fezikai. I like the way Morgan Spencer was throwing the football. She threw that on timing early, right when a Fezikai was even with Jackie Good. She just overthrowed a little bit. They're getting behind the secondary of Omaha. We're near the seven minute mark here in the fourth quarter. You gotta figure a way that Pittsburgh has got to extend this drive. Now with a fourth and five. They don't have many options. They're not going to run the ball, obviously. They have everybody as wide receivers right now in a shotgun. Let's see what Morgan Spencer can come up with. Spencer with a deep drop, throwing down the field to Quaylen Pitts. And I didn't have a great angle of that, but that looked like maybe the ball went through the hands of Pitts. Pitts stopped running the pattern. I don't know why she stopped. She could have ran through that for a touchdown. And now we've got another back and forth. That is Gina Campisi just dropping an Omaha player. And we'll see if she gets a flag here. Campisi obviously not happy. Wow, that was like a pile driver. You could see here Gina Campisi clearly walking off the field. And then Chelsea Hoffman giving her a shove. And then Campisi, if Campisi had landed that right hook, I don't know that Hoffman would still be standing. And then, and then she hit slaps her across the face again. It's flagrant the same time. I think we should pitch her. Uh, especially if it's two penalties. Especially. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. But I'm, I'm not calling both penalties. I'm calling one dead ball foul. She's gone. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm standing here and I'm talking about Chelsea Hoffman. She started it. I think she's going to get the best of it. Looks like they're going to call two fouls against Campisi and maybe kick her out of the game. Well, I don't think you that is that. Remy Olenzak trying to calm down Campisi. The result of the play is a turnover on downs. Omaha will get the ball first and 10. After the play, personal foul, 18 on the defense. Number 18 has ejected herself from tonight's contest. Wow, that's a big move. She is a vital part of this offense and defense. Campisi clearly not happy. Campisi just walking off the field. Chelsea Hoffman hits her first. Campisi hits her back, and now she's getting thrown out of the ball game. What do they say? They always catch the second person. If you're gonna hit somebody, do it first. And she is so powerful. Obviously, that punch was a lot more powerful than what Hoffman threw at her. You can see Campisi very emotional on the sideline as Omaha will take over on downs first and 10 at the Pittsburgh 15-yard line. I do not agree with that call at all. Campisi was walking off to the sideline, minding her own business, and got hit from behind. We'll see if Howell can mount a drive here. Omaha is up 20 to 14 and has both of its timeouts remaining. That penalty was huge. Omaha now has the ball inside the 20 and they can take the lead with a score. Now we've got a challenge flag out here from the Pittsburgh sideline. Go back and watch if that wasn't a punch. It was an opening. They just told me I can challenge it. That is head coach Joe DeBerry challenging whether that was a closed foot closed fist punch or a slap. Now I'll explain the difference. The LFL has adopted a new rule this year that if you connect on a closed fist punch, you're automatically ejected. If it's a head slap, that's not an ejection. So that's what they're looking at here. Head referee Michael Jarosinski, very busy tonight. Pittsburgh has challenged the ruling on the field on number 18's ejection. I like that challenge. I think he's right. Number one, she threw the second punch. The first punch, that should be kicked out of the game. And it was an open hand. If it's an open hand, Campisi should be allowed to return in this game. We'll take another look at it here. 
That is the Hoffman shove of Campisi, and she comes up and wails at her. That looks like a slap to me, though. That is a slap. I've gotten a lot of them, and that was definitely a slap. That is, that is, usually that's the case on a Huco at the end of the date. <laughs> Bobby Huco has gotten a few of those landed across I the chair. I do chip. know what that looks like. We'll see what the call is here. After review, it's been confirmed. 18, still ejected. Did not expect that. You could see frustrated as Joe DeBerry. I'm going to show you a punch, man. Joe DeBerry telling the referee he's going to show him a punch with a closed fist and show him the difference. Now, I don't blame DeBerry for being upset. If this would have been called right, it would have been against These refs Omaha. Are ass, dude. He didn't even look at the fucking screen. That's why they took it away from there so it wouldn't show him not looking. Joe DeBerry still upset. And it's not only the loss of yardage with the unsportsmanlike call. Gina, Gina Campisi is a major part of this team. And if Hoffman would have got a call for throwing the first punch, this would still be Pittsburgh ball. Meanwhile, down on the field, that is Raina Hullabar, an impressive run to the outside, gaining seven yards on the carry. You really have to hand it to Hullabar. She came in here with two running backs out, the quarterback out, and she still gets positive yardage. Good running back, solid player. Make that a nine-yard carry. As the clock continues to run, we're approaching the six-minute mark. This could be the final nail in the coffin for Pittsburgh if Omaha can mount a drive and get a score here. Lindsey Howe is not a great quarterback, but she is a veteran. She has started in this league. As long as she doesn't make mistakes, their running game is working. A second and one ball down to the six-yard line of Pittsburgh. Howell under center and just being pushed back and now sloppily trying to hand it off. That was Lindsey Noble getting back on the football. That could have been disastrous for this Omaha team. It could have also been a touchdown if somehow she could have grabbed that. She had the corner and there was nobody out there. Powell actually did a great job to get the football out there. Now, wait a minute. They are marking this a fumble and a recovery by Pittsburgh. There's the fumble clearly on the ground, but it looked like Noble got back on it. Once the ball is on the ground and that scrum happens, with everybody grabbing for the football, it's really who comes up with the football. Yeah, they're going to give the ball back over to Pittsburgh. How big is that? That looked like Danielle Bush on the recovery. But Noble had the angle on it. And that's, is that a case where the, he's got the stronger arms down there? That's how it usually occurred, but that was clearly recovered by Omaha. I don't know how they miss it. That's two calls in a row. I do not agree with the official. Pittsburgh getting new life here. A first and 10 at its own 15-yard line. Spencer faking the toss right. This is a design rollout, and look at Spencer keeping her balance, and she'll gain four yards. Spencer is deceptively fast. Sometimes she looks like a newborn horse running, but she somehow she gets around the corner. Watch this. It's a bootleg, a naked bootleg. She gets outside. If she can stay in, it's a big game, but she runs out of bounds. Spencer getting to the outside of Kelsey Lane. We do have a penalty on that previous play. This looks to be a holding. I'm not sure if that's on Pittsburgh or possibly the secondary of Omaha. This game got ugly quick. It was such a good football game here in the last minute or so. A lot of penalties. Holding defense, number 17. 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. That is a huge call. That penalty is on Macy and Sarah. And that adds another 10 yards to the end of the Spencer run. Wow, when the Omaha coaching staff watch these films, I don't know how this game is going to end, but they're giving this game away right now. Spencer now first and 10 ball at midfield. So Pittsburgh has plenty of time here, and they do have a timeout remaining. Is the end around reverse or the fake reverse to Quaylen Pitts? And Pitts gaining three yards. They were hoping they would go for the fake reverse. Pitts kept the ball. She has blazing speed. But she gained positive yards, but actually a solid play by the defense of Omaha. I like the speed of Pitts getting to the outside. And now with Astrid Cruz, they're almost like an identical set in the backfield. If they can tighten up Pitts' game, she has explosive potential. A second and seven empty back set. Morgan Spencer under center, dropping back. 
Here comes the blitz by Omaha, rolling right. Spencer having a lot of success on the sidelines. Gaining seven yards. I don't know how she's getting outside the pocket because she does not have blazing speed, but somehow it seems like all night long she's turning the corner for positive yardage. And that is a first down Pittsburgh. A nice looking drive here by the veteran quarterback, Morgan Spencer. Alex Drake could take notes. Spencer gets yardage and then gets out of bounds. She doesn't take big hits. First and 10, Spencer setting up Astrid Cruz in the backfield. Now under center, going to hand it off to Cruz. Cruz has a lane. And boy, that closes up pretty quickly. Gacklin good on the tackle. Cruz does one thing great running backs do. She runs to daylight. She finds daylight. There's never any holes up front, and she'll find the hole to go through. That three-yard Cruz run now setting up a second and seven. That is defensive coordinator Cale Good of the Omaha Heart. His defense always one of the better ones in the league. They got to come up with a stop here somehow. It's going to come down to their defense. Absolutely. They're going to have to make a stop on Morgan Spencer this drive. Now a second and seven. A quick dart to Efezekai. And just beyond her outstretched hands. Great read by Morgan Spencer. Just a little bit out of front of Efezekai. She got behind Lindsey Noble again. She's gotten behind that Omaha secondary all night. If that was a little bit underthrown, it would have been another touchdown for Pittsburgh. A Fezekai, a big target. I don't know how quite you miss her standing at six foot one in the wingspan of a bald eagle. I can't believe Omaha's defense has not adjusted to take the top off. So you have a defense. She's gotten behind the safeties all night long. A third and seven reverse to Cruz. Now Cruz cutting it inside. And that interior of that Omaha defense, led by Sarah Robinson, is having a great game. If Cruz could have kept that outside, she actually had the quarterback out there sealing the side, Morgan Spencer. She cut it up. It could have been big if she stayed outside. Now a fourth and five, a sloppy snap back to Spencer. Nothing doing. A great tackle there by Macy and Sarah. So give credit to this Omaha defense. They held. They held, but again, Jacqueline Trejo, the center. That's a third time tonight that a bad snap has caught them a series. Omaha, just when Pittsburgh was threatening, Hale Goods defense comes through once again. Come on, we need the ball back. Come on, pass. That happens in football, Defense. though. The offensive coordinator and quarterback, Defense. they go at it like Bill Sims used to do with Bill Parcells, Dick Kid McMahon. She's not happy with the play calling right now of Jermont Kynes. A first and 10 ball at the Omaha 13. That is an inside handoff to number four. That looks like Lindsey Noble. Make that Reina Holobar. That is a gain of three yards. And now Omaha, all they have to do is run this clock out. Don't be surprised if Hal gives the ball to Holobar every play, just running that two minutes out. That'll take us to the two-minute warning with Pittsburgh down 20 to 14, but fighting back. Hold her up and someone else get in there and punch the ball out. Back to LFL football night as we take a listen in to the Pittsburgh sideline. Smart coaching there by DeBury and then their staff trying to get them to strip the football. Whoever gets to the running back first, hold them up. The other players come in, strip the football out. A second and seven, and as we said before the break, Omaha now simply just has to run out the clock and get out of here with the win. Al back in the shotgun. A low snap. Both centers have had a lot of difficulty, and that is nearly another turnover. That one looks like Hal did get back on it. That's the one thing they can't do, turn the ball over. A bad snap, they might have got it right now. That is a three-yard loss. You can see the Omaha players pointing the other way. Indeed, Howell was able to recover the fumble. The defensive players know once the ball is on the ground, you keep fighting until the referee blows the whistle. Even though it looks like the other team has it, try to steal it on the ground. 
The clock now becomes as big a story as the scoreboard. Pittsburgh desperately trying to get this ball back with under two minutes remaining. And we've got a third and 11. This is where Omaha misses Alex Drake, their starting quarterback. Even though she's not having a great game, she can throw it down the field. Another low snap, this time handoff to Sarah Robinson. Make that Lindsey Noble, no chance there. A great open field tackle by Tracy Wilmer. Now this gets interesting. They keep the ball on the ground, third and 11. There's no threat of a pass. Great tackling by the defense of Pittsburgh. Now it's fourth down. Lindsey Howe is going to have to try to throw the football. And the other bit of bad news there is Lindsey Noble ran out of bounds, so that stopped the clock. Pittsburgh, meanwhile, can conserve its final timeout. Two bad plays there. Now, Abezika, you can see her eyes light up. This is where she comes into action with a quarterback that can't throw, but is forced into a passing situation. That's exactly right, a fourth and ten. I don't know too many run plays that are designed to pick up you ten yards. This. Give me one more. Down in distance, it's fourth and ten. I'm a coach. They, they don't want to have the, the ball at 14 yards. They're going to pass off the ball. Where we go? Cover them three. Lock it. Corners and safety swap. Fucking fast in the air. Yeah, it's 4th and 10. They're not going to tell it here. Well, watch the Watch the ball. Okay? This play. It's the biggest play on defense right now. It's literally the biggest play of the season for you guys on defense. All right, 12. Get your block. We got, hey, we got 10 yards. Okay? 10 yards. Get outside. Find the hole and go. Hold your blocks, ladies. Let's go. Surprisingly, Dante Allen is not going to throw the football. He's going to put this game in the hands of Lindsey Howe with her running it. I don't know what this play selection is, but I don't agree with this at all. It appears they're going to try some kind of a jet sweep to the outside. And I don't think she has the speed to get there. They'll need 10 yards either way. This is the play of the game right here. A minute 20 remaining ball at the 13-yard line. That is what's going to happen. Howell trying to get to the outside. No chance. That'll be well short of the first down. And Pittsburgh takes over on downs. That might have been the worst call in the LFL this season. They needed over 10 yards. They run a quarterback sweep outside and then run out of bounds to stop the clock for Pittsburgh. They get the ball back with a minute and 14 seconds left in the game. Terrible call by Dante Allen. And a great job there by Pittsburgh's Ginger Kutchbach coming up to force Howell out of bounds. Great reaction by the Pittsburgh defense. They were expecting the pass. It was a run. They all reacted and got Hal out of bounds. A first and 10 for this Pittsburgh offense. Ball of the 19 of Omaha. Now Morgan Spencer back to pass into the end zone. And that is a Pittsburgh touchdown complete to Efezekai. Megatron, Efezekai again gets on top of the coverage over top of Jackie Good. Morgan Spencer delivers another strike on the money for a touchdown. Pittsburgh, what a grab by a Fezekai. How about that outside shoulder pass by Morgan Spencer? She had to show a lot of touch on that pass. Well, she saw again the pre-snap read. It was one-on-one -on -one coverage. It's 6-1 of Fezekai. All she has to do is lay it out there, let her jump up. And now we've got a tied ball game, 20-20. With a one-point conversion here, Pittsburgh will go on top. This could be the play of the game. A bunch set by the Rebellion, rolling right wide open of Fezekai. And that'll be an extra point. And now we've got some back and forth. That is Amanda Hogan landing a punch. That looked like Sonia Osselborn came up. And Hogan just laid her out, but look at the extra point. Great play call. Ephesakai wide open. Osborne, I don't know what she's doing. She's not even in the game. She comes out of nowhere. Bam! Down goes Osborne. That I don't think I've ever seen a knockout punch like that. That's Amanda Hogan being talked to by league personnel and now being escorted off the field. Let's take another look at this punch. Bam! We don't need a ref. We might need a priest. Amanda Hogan being escorted off the field. One of the quieter players in the game. Sonia Oselborn must have just said the right words. 
The result of the one-point conversion is a good score. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct number seven of the defense. Unsportsmanlike conduct bench personnel of the offense. Those penalties will offset. First and ten, Omaha. I don't know what Osborne was thinking. Your team gets the lead 21-20. You come off the bench and get in Amanda Hogan's face. And then she comes back. Mild-mannered Amanda Hogan with a right cross that would have made uh, Mayweather proud. Incredible action. This is the final drive for Omaha. Minute eight remaining. That is Lindsey Howell looking impressive in the open field. And she needs to get out of bounds and does just that. That was a good little chunk of yardage there as we approach 58 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. There's Alex Drake out of the ball game, but Lindsey Howe is a good athlete. There's a lot of time left, 58 seconds, and they're already inside the 20-yard line. That was an 18-yard scramble by Howe. Plenty of time remaining, 58 seconds, and Omaha does have a timeout. And I believe they're going to elect to use it here. Or no, just a little bit of confusion. Howell returning back to the field. So it'll be a first and 10 at about the 17 yard line. This is Howell, quick little dump off. Jackie Good, that was intended for number three, had no shot at that. Good call by Dante Allen, a short pass, keep it short for Lindsey Howell. She couldn't get it down low enough for Good, but it would have been a gain of about five yards and out of bounds. That incomplete pass setting up a second in 10. Ball remains at the 17-yard line of Pittsburgh. Now all receivers tripped right. Howell looking into the end zone. Nearly intercepted by a Fezekai. I don't know that I would be testing number 15 right now. They tried to get on top of a Fezekai. Actually a decent throw. That was close to being pass interference because they, they pulled the wide receiver out of the play. A third and ten. Not a lot of confidence in Howell's arm, but they're going to have to find some magic here as they trail this one 21 to 20. And this Pittsburgh crowd starting to get on this Omaha offense. Ball remains at the 17. Another poor snap. Howell trying to make something of it. Does get out of bounds. And I believe that was about a loss of a yard. Setting up a fourth down. Center Lindsey Burst with a terrible snap at this time of the game with 43 seconds left. The good thing is, is that Hal got out of bounds and stopped the clock. This is the play of the game. A fourth and ten for this Omaha offense. If they do not convert, Pittsburgh will get its first ever franchise win. And for Omaha, this could be the playoffs on the line. A fourth and ten. Omaha would be well served to call their final timeout. That is exactly what they do here. Slow them down. You gotta put the ball in there. Bunch right. Okay. Y, nine at the sideline. X, eight. You bring yours all the way across to the sideline. Just want to drag it across and take it to the end zone. So we got to get the end zone. So, if mine's open, you hit her. Right there. She, her line should be there. If she's not, you scramble to your left as fast as you can. And then throw that bit to Raina right here. Okay? Good call by Dante Allen. It's a bunch set. They're going to try to get the nine route to go route first. If not, Howell's going to scramble across. And you have a drag mount coming across the back of the end zone. Good play call. Let's see if it works. A fourth and ten for the backup quarterback, Lindsey Howell. Receivers all flanked to her right side. Howell back to pass. How will not get there as the Pittsburgh defense gets a monumental stop. Why didn't she throw the football? There's no way she's going to run it in. In the four years that I've known Dante Allen, I have never seen a meltdown like this. He is very frustrated, clearly, with Lindsey Howe.
Jackie Good is right on. There's 35 seconds left. You still have a shot. But you're right about Dante Allen. He cannot believe Lindsey Al didn't give anybody a chance to catch a touchdown. A first and 10. That's all they have to do. The victory formation for Pittsburgh. And reality starting to set in for Omaha. They are going to lose to the expansion Pittsburgh Rebellion. That play could have cost them the playoffs. She had specific instructions. Throw the ball in the end zone. Give the receiver a chance. There's no way she was going to run 18 yards for a touchdown. And you could see the other side of the fence. Pittsburgh realizing they've just picked up their first ever win. That has got to be a special feeling. They've got a shot. We talked about it before the game. They had a win to have any shot, even though it's slim to make the playoffs. But they look like a solid football team tonight. Yeah, and I don't think anybody's even considering playoffs. Certainly not Omaha now. But this has got to just be a great win for the franchise. They have shown signs, Pittsburgh has, but it really all came together tonight. On both sides of the football, the offense and defense worked together. Morgan Spencer had a great game. Abednekai had a great game. The defense looked good. I'm telling you, Pittsburgh in 2018, it could happen. Congratulations to head coach Joe DeBerry and its Pittsburgh Rebellion. And that young lady having a game MVP type performance. For Omaha, they have one shot. Do or die against Chicago at home July 21st. It's a tough task. Got to be the champ, but they have to do it. The walking wounded Omaha will now return home. Tonight, the story was Pittsburgh, an expansion team made of veterans and rookies capturing the franchise's first ever win for Bobby Huco. This is Mitch Mortaza. We will see you next week on LFL Football Night.